this is a hardback edition. Let's just turn it around. The hardback edition of my second novel, The Servants of Need. It's the longest of my four published books. And, um, I think it's about 162,000 words. I started writing it in I think September 2018, finished March. I got the first edition published March 2020. This is the third edition because I didn't until my fourth book perfect my revision technique. Years ago, I did a course in proofreading and copy editing, but I didn't apply what I'd learnt to editing my own works because I was just, sometimes I'm just like that, I just don't do it. Anyhow, as of my fourth book, every all of that got perfected, so I revised all my earlier books and they're all up to scratch and future works, I know what I'm doing then. I mean, really, I know what I'm doing because I'm reading a book which is quite beautiful, but I already caught some errors, and it's like you got more errors in me than than my books have. So anyhow, that's not really her fault because that's something her editors should have caught sooner. I, I could have done a better job, but anyhow. This third edition, you can see the colours here. They're sort of like reddish, and it's very dim lighting. The original photo that was taken in early 2019 and I was just sort of like messing about with my with a selfie stick and this is an edited I edited the photo for the front cover the first edition the tones are sort of brown like a sort of sepia the second they were yellow third one I don't know why I didn't do this the first time around it just didn't click but um this color this sort of color scheme it's it's apt because of a scene that occurs in the book and the dim lighting also is in keeping with that. Now um, I'm going to go and make sure I'm decent because I just want my light stuff. See this light here? I don't know what the fuck is wrong with it, really. Come on, see, on, on, on. Why is it doing this? Usually if a bulb's done it's just done it just doesn't dim this is not a dimmer bulb and so far as i know no one's gone and fucked around with me and just turned it down anyhow i'm gonna turn off the big lights yeah see this is like a scene from the servants of need when everything goes sort of like dull i mean i don't actually know why it's going like this and yeah, there is supernatural activity which is going on, which does influence the lighting in the Servants of Need. But f I don't know why this is going on with me. Anyhow, I'm going to turn the light off now because I can't be bothered with it. It's just too dim. See, it goes it goes off slowly. I'll do that again. What What's the matter with you? See? Now, see? See? You didn't used to do that before. You just used to go, oh, what the hell? I really don't know what the fuck's going on there. Anyhow. The Servants of Need, in addition to being the longest of my novels, it's the one in which I draw the most heavily upon my actual lived experience for. It's not autobiographical, but there's just a lot of myself that I've put into that book. And not just my personal life, but the lives of my, my mother's side of the family and my father's side of the family. This is all fictional, but I did draw heavily upon my real life. It's the first of my books in which I've actually made up a fictional place. My first novel... The Night Tide of Summer Long, I based that on actual locations in the UK, which, well, which I am, um, which I knew from when I grew up, when I grew up there. But I don't actually have any place names mentioned there. Servants of Need is set in the fictional continent of Paravanaga. Paravanaga is a mashup of Singapore and Malaysia. I was born in Singapore, 
My mother was born in Malaysia. My father was born in Singapore, and they met at Singapore University. They're both studying dentistry. Anyhow, Parapanaga, that was the first place that I made up. Then there's Langiana, which is based on Australia. That's where my paternal grandfather emigrated to sometime in the 60s. His, um, he took his family there, his wife and his youngest daughter youngest child and I'm just thinking I think my um, father's youngest brother went with them but my father's middle brother he stayed in Singapore and my father joined my mother in England he didn't really want to but you know she went and then he and I followed her it's a bit, it's a bit of a messy situation that anyhow Langiana is the other place. Then there's the Isle of Iwaza. That is very, very, very loosely based on Sentosa, Sentosa Island, which I think I may have gone to when I was very small. I don't know, but my father talked about it a lot. Uh, the last time I was um, at Singapore, it was in um, 2007, springtime. I went to Malaysia for a family reunion and then I took the bus to see family in Singapore briefly and then I returned to Malaysia for my um, grand, my maternal grandmother's birthday, I think it was 97 or 98, I don't know because I mean we're not really sure when precisely she was born so she could actually have been older, she could have been over 100 when she died, I don't know. Anyhow, that second novel, that was really, really cathartic. There are scenes that actually not only really occurred in real life, but I drew upon a real life incident that happened. And since completing the book and reading it, it's not, I don't even feel like that happened to me anymore because that's how damn cathartic it was. There are details I put into it. I think, did that actually happen? Yes, it did. It's just that after I got it all out of my system, it's like it's not a part of me anymore. I took 167 in-character shots as the ex of the antagonist. The antagonist is Nick, and he's also the, live, the love interest. And he's got this relationship with his evil ex where he says he makes out like she's the evil one but as you get to know more about it it's questionable who really is the evil one there and yeah i took um 167 in character shots as his ex 127 of those shots passed and by the time you know i was done with that i was i'd gone to being underweight because it was just a really cathartic process i lost um quite a bit of weight i got up down to about 99 pounds then I went down to 97 I thought you better bring it up again because this was like by this stage you know it wasn't just a case of periods being irregular it was I was losing strength and stamina and that's why I decided to bring to put the weight back on because well that's that's the priority and yeah I'm back up to about um 106 pounds now so that's okay I don't mind it going down to about 102 but you just don't go down to under 100 anyhow that was um, one hell of a, an experience and it did transform me because after I finished taking the in-character shots, in addition to being underweight, I ended up feeling a lot older, not in a bad way. I think that there was a younger part of me that was hanging around and after I got all the stuff that out of my system that she wanted me to get out of my system, it's like... I got up to being the woman in my 40s that I was, and I'm, I'm still in my 40s, I'm close to 50 now. Anyhow, um, even though writing it, I started writing it in 2018, I was 44 at the time, and we were 40, not quite 46 by the time I finished, I was, yeah, I was 45. The real author of that story was actually 13 year old me using my adult resources the adult resources that she had at her disposal because of where I'd got to but it was a younger part of me that was writing that utilizing all my experiences that I mean I would never write something like that now because 
I just wouldn't because it's not in me 